this is Andreas Moritz and this is a question from Melinda Strusinski. Many people have one person in their life who always makes them feel angry, anxious and upset. It could be a mother-in-law, your boss, a friend, etc. These people push all your buttons and even when they are not pushing our buttons, just being in their presence causes a feeling of great uneasiness. How do you best deal with being around these types of people? And what can we tell ourselves when we are in their presence? Why are they in our lives? And uh, this is not an easy in your, your question to answer um, because there are complexities that only relate to a person's uh, past, um, their upbringing, childhood experiences, um, and karmic relationships that are not uh, typically um, av you know, available to these individuals. Um, I've seen uh, many cases where uh, someone like a boss uh, who is very, very dominating and uh, controlling um, because of a past life relationship where the exact opposite uh, had occurred. And so that person who is being controlled um, has you know, certain guilty feelings from a previous um, you know, relationship where he was the suppressor or the person who was controlling the other person. And in order to balance that experience, uh, he has to be on the receiving end. Now, not because he deserves to be punished by that now boss, but because there is a certain amount of guilt and shame from having done something bad to that same person when he was the victim. And so the, the only way uh, for these two individuals to bring an old conflict into balance is to come back together, to find each other, and to reverse the roles so that uh, the one person who was the the, the victimizer becomes the victim and vice versa and both of these individuals benefit from that interaction. Now, when a person uh, has their button pushed, uh, yeah, it's only because there are buttons that can be pushed. If there were no buttons that could be pushed, then uh, nobody could push them. So in other words, um, the victim is always responsible for what happens to them. The victim is asking for it unconsciously though. If it were conscious, he would not uh, allow this. So the, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, most important thing to understand in this, um, in our relationships with other people who push our buttons, is that we somehow give it out. Uh, there is a feeling uh, inside of ourselves that we are not worthy. So therefore we may make mistakes. Then the boss comes around and it's pointing it out or criticizing, it, uh, criticizing us over making that mistake. And then we may feel angry because he is criticizing us. Uh, so it gives us an opportunity to get in touch with uh, suppressed feelings of anger towards ourselves because we can never ever get angry about someone else. Um, it's, a, it's an old myth that you, know, you get angry with someone or a situation. This cannot be true because uh, if, if there is no anger towards yourself inside you, then it um, doesn't matter what anyone does to you, you cannot have anger towards that person. Um, it can only, there can only be fire coming out of you if there is fire already inside of you. If there is no fire inside of you, it cannot flare up, doesn't matter what anyone else does to you. Uh, the idea that other people make us angry is an illusion. Um, if there is someone that uh, comes to me and criticizes me and I get angry, it is only because there is something inside of me that uh, is re you know, reminded by that particular instant or attack or criticism that I have not made terms with yet. 
something inside of me I don't like about myself. And when there is something I don't appreciate, love or accept in myself, for example, having made mistakes, and I still blame myself for that, then someone else has to come along in the immediate environment. Uh, could be a mother-in-law, could be a boss, could be a friend or an enemy. Uh, any of these individuals then will point out to, to me that what exactly I'm doing to myself. So if I don't like myself, someone will not like me. If I really like myself, then someone else will come and like me too. So we all have all kinds of uh, parts to ourselves, the likable, the beautiful parts that other people bring to the surface so that we can see, oh yes, there is something beautiful about me. Uh, and likewise, there will be people in our lives that will bring out the worst in us, so to say, the things uh, that we have suppressed, we didn't want other people to see, our vulnerabilities, the mistakes that we make, the ugliness, the things that uh, we, we hate uh, in ourselves, uh, or the guilt and shame that we have uh, brought into this lifetime uh, from other lifetimes, or the guilt and shame that we have uh, acquired during our childhood years. So these people are doing us a great favor. They are like uh, post, the postman who delivers letters to us. Sometimes we receive beautiful letters and postcards or greeting cards where people wish as well, or we receive nasty letters, people that uh, don't like us and they complain uh, to us about you know, what we have done to them. Um, but if we went out and the blamed the postman for delivering these letters, then uh, this is uh, you're misdirected. Uh, the, the blame uh, shouldn't be there in the first place because there is nobody to be blamed when something supposedly bad is happening to us. Um, when someone puts us down and criticizes us, it's a blessing in disguise and it should not be counter-reacted uh, against. We need to be, become more aware of our responses to something that happens to us. So if right now someone comes to me and says, you are such a bad person and you did this and this and this, uh, I have two choices. I can counter-react and start attacking that other person for being so un unkind to me and be very angry with him. Or I can breathe here for a moment and uh, take a couple of deep breaths and say, well, this happened to me, so why did this happen to me? What is the benefit from that criticism? Um, what does it tell me? Is there something in me that I still am not appreciating enough? Something I'm not accepting enough? Uh, something I don't like about myself? Things that I've done to other people I feel ashamed uh, for uh, or guilty about. And so these are eye-openers for us. Uh, negative experiences like that <coughs> help us to come to terms with more of ourself, to learn to appreciate and love and accept all the weaknesses that we may have, the mistakes that we may have made. Uh, the things that we have done to other people and we have cursed ourselves over that. So these are opportunities. Uh, therefore, a, a mother-in-law who is hostile you know, to us or a boss that you know, keeps you know, commandeering us around uh, and uh, constantly you know, putting us down, these are not coincidental happenings. These are opportunities to learn more about what we are doing to ourselves. And once we learn to simply accept uh, these incidences as useful, doesn't matter if we understand them or not, simply by accept accepting them and saying, well, there is a blessing in disguise in this. I may not know why this is happening to me, but it, the fact that it is happening to me, it must be for a good reason. 
And so you will find that by staying with the emotion, the feeling, the welling up of anger or, or fear or whatever, is allowing you to get deeper in touch with who you are at that time. And it allows these, trans these emotions to transform into something more useful. Uh, every time we are, are afraid of something, we typically shut our door to our heart. And this doesn't make us feel good. This makes us angry. And so by accepting what comes to us as a blessing in disguise, it allows these emotions to uh, sort of become diminished uh, until they disappear. And then we realize, oh my God, I feel so much better about myself. Um, if someone is angry with you, you can easily make the choice and, re and reach out to that person and say, gosh, you know, is there anything I can do for you? Obviously you're not very happy right now, or maybe I can make your day a little happier. Um, let me know, please, if there's anything I can do to make that happen. And uh, reach, you're giving them your hand, reaching out, Instead of uh, reacting against them, you can reach out and give them something, surprise them. Um, tell them that you really, really appreciate your boss, uh, especially at that moment when he is attacking you. Uh, say, please let me know if there is anything I can do to make it better for you. <laughs> and so, there is a saying by Jesus Christ, love your enemies. And uh, your loving ex your, your enemies means love your adversities, love the things that are uh, hurled at you, uh, the host hostility, uh, the anger, the criticism. These are all the supposed animal uh, enemies. And so by <coughs> accepting them, by loving your enemies, accepting them, bring them into your home. Uh, home means heart. And by bringing them into your heart, by letting them be there for a while, simply by letting them be there, rather than rejecting or trying to avoid these fears or, or anger or emotions, allow them to be there and then they will transform into your friends. Your enemies will become your friends. And by revealing your own weaknesses to other people, uh, other people will appreciate you more, will accept you more, and the hostility will simply end. So these are simple advices that have worked uh, for so many people, and I uh, wholeheartedly uh, recommend that uh, you practice that. It's not a difficult practice, um, and it starts by accepting yourself the way you are. Don't try to change yourself, don't try to make yourself better because that will imply there is something bad about what you are, something that uh, is negative. Uh, you don't need to do that. All that is required is to accept everything about you, positive and negative, not try to change yourself, but to accept yourself. And that is a form of loving yourself. And once that is accomplished, there is no way people will start um, yeah, attacking you because there is nothing that can be attacked. Uh, if anyone still attacks you, it will go right through you, will not uh, create an impact, there is no buttons to be pushed anymore, and therefore there is no conflict. Um, so anyone who is still trying to relieve their anger and, and uh, you know, just spread it in their environment, it will only hit those that offer resistance to it. And so if there's no more resistance in you, it will go right through you, uh, or it will you know, just dissipate, uh, and so you're not affected by it. This is the best possible advice I can give to your question. Thank you.